always difficult for the ringside whips to bring the other man in and sometimes there's a, a little delay that you often think could easily be deliberate just to give an extra edge but they are shuffling outside now trying to get him ready so at the ringside with me the former lightweight champion of the world and we've worked together on uh, ITV is Jim Watt hello Reg well, Jim, it's a, before the first bell, it's always stick your chin out time. I know you haven't seen too much of these middleweights. Would you like to pick one at this stage? Well, when they first started talking about this fight about six, seven, eight months ago, I strongly fancied gums. But uh, the improvement... One o'clock today, gums scaled 11 stones, five and three quarter pounds. Kayla, 11 stones, five and a half pounds. The officials for this contest, referee is Mr. James Brimmel, Timekeeper, Mr. Tom Powell. So, no difference with the weights. 11 stone, 6 pound Gentlemen, is the middleweight division. Nasty, please clear the gangways. Just to repeat you those then 11, 5, 3 quarters in. gums, 11, 5 and a half, Kayla. And for 6 feet 2 gums, it's a remarkable to me that he actually gets down to the middleweight limit. Well, we've seen this before. Quite a bit of steering going on. Uh, I'm always surprised when Mark Kayla does it. He always looks such a bushy-tailed charred outside the ring. So set then for 12 rounds now, not the 15 as it used to be. And if the fight turns out, well, half as good as the build-up and the press chat, it should be a good one. Taylor talked of tactics coming out early and keeping Gums occupied by volume of punches, not standing and posing. But gums is saying, OK, if you want it that way, that's how it's got to be. Gums says that he plans each contest differently, he doesn't have set plans. had a good few knockout wins lately in Canada against Jerry Holly which you may have seen on ITV spectacular uppercut comes give the impression of trying to appear a bit nonsense but he isn't really a wounded cat he soon springs back as he's done here so a minute to go then in the opening round reliable left hand jab Mark Polar good point scoring stuff no judges for this James Brimmel from Wales sole arbiter Can't say we won't need the mathematics. Both think that their man is going to win inside the distance. And that's easy for them to say. They're on the safe side of the ropes. When the bell goes, watch how they jump out. So the soccer style chance of Kayla. Kayla as we get the countdown coming up for the first round. And remember if a boxer goes down in the last 10 seconds, the count would continue except in the last round. Well, that's um, as bright a start, I think, that you could hope for in a championship fight. Jim Watt? Yeah, well, I was very surprised. Quite often when you have two big punches in the one ring, the, the first round's very quiet because they're paying each other too much respect. 
But that certainly wasn't the case in this opening round. That was a terrific round. If the rest of the fight goes on like this, everybody's going to go home happy. I think Keeler was very keen on showing Gums how much he fancied the job with his showing off before the fight and the way he started the fight. But uh, a couple of times he got a little bit reckless. And you can't do that against a man like Gums. And a couple of times I thought Gums shook him up a little. The round was probably even, but uh, Kayla will have to tighten up a little bit because Gums is very cagey, as I say, and uh, a very big puncher. OK, fine, I don't suppose statistics matter too much, but Gums has had uh, 26 wins and lost eight, and Kayla's had 23 unbeaten with 20 stops inside. Gums has stopped 21. So round two. Referee scores in half points unless one boxer has a very clear win in the round with a maximum of 10 points. But Jim suggests that could have been a 10-10 and I wouldn't argue too much with that. Well, the West End chant of the blowing bubbles. While it might be music to Kayla's ears, he's still got to do the business himself because this really is the loneliest spot in the world. He had a little snarl there, Jim Kayla. I'm wondering whether it was time to taunt Gums a bit. Well, actually, I think Gums snarled first. I think uh, Kayla threw a punch and Gums blocked it and sneered at him. So I, I think they're still trying a little bit of the psychological warfare. Yeah. Well, the psychological doesn't hurt as much as the punches, does it? That's the main thing. But good even match. All the critics were divided on who they thought would win this. I think in the press... Kayla just got the edge on the numbers. Gums had a very sketchy start to his career, but he certainly changed it all around now, being unbeaten in five years. He lost very early in his eighth fight to Tony Simpson. Well, Kayla making no attempt, but actually enjoying bobbing and weaving, getting away from those punches in his own corner, getting encouragement from Terry Lawless and trainer Jimmy Tibbs. Half a minute to go then. Gums getting on with the job, but if confidence counts, certainly Kayla's look very impressive. And not only could West Ham win the middleweight championship, they could win the league title, cup and boat race as well by the look of this. Well, Kayla had a good round there, some good boxing. I'm wondering, looking in that corner now, Jim, as they're giving the wash and brush up treatment, what do you think that Terry Lawless might be saying to Kayla there? Well, a couple of times when Kayla went to the ropes, I thought it was just a little bit ragged. I think Terry will tell him to tighten up a little. If you, if you look at Gums, you'll see he's always, he always has his hands cupped in front of his face and his elbows tucked in. Uh, it doesn't present an open target at all. A couple of times, uh, Matt's getting cut out on the ropes because it's a little bit ragged. So I think Terry will probably say, tighten up, keep sticking the jab out, because I think... If Keeler gets his jab working, that was probably one of his uh, one of his strongest assets. But Gums is a very good fighter. He's keeping his cool, a very good professional. Yes, confidence is one thing, but Taylor just can't afford to overdo it. He, mu he really mustn't get cocky. So third round then. And certainly now living up to the championship expectations. Another 
tallest middleweights around, Roy Gums at six foot two. And to get inside 11 staying six pounds, I've often joked with him that he must have hollow legs, but he makes it quite easily. Maybe Kayla has taken heed there and listened to that lecture in the corner as Jim suggested. And he seems a bit more serious now. He's cutting out the little frill stuff that he's been giving us. accustomed to quite a bit of recent success now realizes that this is a hot one in every way Sparring for openings at this stage. They've driven that early round venom and stuff. Now I'm trying to pick each other off. Minute to go in the third. a lot with punches. Kayla trying to vary them, switching from head to body. Certainly more composed here, Kayla, isn't it, Jim? For the last 15 seconds of this round. Yeah, well, I think they both realise that 12 rounds is a long time, and uh, if the fight's going to go the distance, it would be fatal to run out of steam. So I think they've decided well, they want to make the punches count rather than just uh, throw them all over the place. Have a look at Gums there. Won the British title against Howard Mills. It was vacated by Tony Sibson. And then he won the Commonwealth Championship against Ralph Hollett. He fought him twice in Canada and really did the destruction job there. He owns a Lonsdale belt outright now. Defeated Eddie Burke in Glasgow. Glenn McEwen in Liverpool. And he's had some good wins over uh, Americans in London. Al Styles in two rounds. Nat King in one. Jerry Holly in two. And uh, he really moves around a bit. He's had as many managers as he's had hot dinners. And over there in Kayla's corner. Familiar figure of Lawless in front of his man there. And on the right, Jimmy Tibbs, who used to box for West Ham. Now become a, a prominent coach. And Frank Black on the outside. So round four. <laughs> Referee Bruno just giving them the hefty bark now and again been needed to physically part them in any way. British referees tend to try and do that. Stay out of the action. It's not turn it into a wrestling match. Well, over there in Gum's corner, trainer Ernie Fossey. I wonder if we can just pinch a word with him while the fight's on. Ernie Fossey, how are you ready going? Uh, yeah, it's a good old fight at the moment. Probably, um, Kane is probably just in front at the moment. But, well, it's a long way to go yet. Roy's not daunted by this attack Kayla's brought on him. No, no, not at all. He's quite yeah, calm Roy. and collected. Still optimistic? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, an honest opinion there from Ernie Fossey, an old Islington boxer. He thought Caleb might be just in front. It's always good when the corner man have got their judgment right. A little bit of blood specking around Gum's white trunks. He's an awkward man to fight, Gum. There you see there, he comes in with every type of punch. And he got exceptionally long reach. Those fists at the end of them are spiteful. They feel a bit like bolts when they land. Well, we've discovered already that Kayla can absorb some good punches, but he doesn't want to absorb too many. Took those well. But not there. He caught him on the temple. And he lost a little bit of control of the legs there, Kayla. And Gums has done this in Commonwealth fights in the fourth round. There was a push at the finish there, but Brim was picking up the count from the timekeeper right next to me. Seven, eight, made it clean. He was banging on the canvas there. Terry Lawless for Kayla to get up and try and take the pie away. And the bell has come to the rescue there. That's just when Kayla needed to hear it. And in fact, he's hanging on and you're wondering if he even heard the bell. And it's a long walk back to that corner. Well, Jim. Well, uh, Gums it seemed to spend most of the early part of that round stalking Kayla as though he was looking to let go with some big punches. He, he wasn't leading with jabs or anything else. And then towards the end of the round, he started unloading. And as I said, Kayla's hands are just a little bit low and he got himself into trouble. And uh, he took some real heavy stuff there, and uh, as, as you see, on the floor. But... Well, when he got up off the floor, he actually landed a good punch onto Gums. I think this is really going to be a terrific punch. So there, we'll look at I'll look at this in replay now. He was a little bit confident there early on, Kayla, and then he got tagged. And then he starts to wind these punches up from all angles, Gums. He's very rough when he starts to throw punches. But as I thought, he also shoved him down. So round five, and although it was finally a shove with the forearm when uh, Kayla went down in that round, it counts as a knockdown on the referee scorecard because there were a series of punches that preceded that. Well, that's made up the leeway for Gums right away. difficult for a boxer to cope with lockdown because Kayla's had such a good ride as a pro. Oh, good left hook there. And the, it's getting in a bit rough now. The, it's a bit catch as catch can. He grimaced gums there. He showed to the audience, not only to Kayla, that he didn't like that left hand uppercut that came in. Good stiff jab, and Gums looks as though he's cut around the face too, yes, over the eye. His right eye is bleeding quite badly. I think that was why you could see Gums visibly shaking his head at one point. Well, that's an amazing turnaround. Kayla in trouble, and now he's come back and hurt and cut the champion. size what a turnaround in the fifth round with a minute to go and gums is pinned there in Kayla's own corner and can he hear this no he's counted him out it looked as though he couldn't hear the count the, ri the ring is absolutely going to be invaded the security people up and the cockney hero who looked as though he may not survive at one point in the round came back in the fifth and have you ever seen a happier face than that and really he dismantled piece by piece there Roy Guns 
after he was cut, he really looked as though he suddenly not exactly lost interest, but realised that he was going to be punished. And Kayla, to his credit, did not let him off the hook. Well, while they're going crazy in the ring, Jim, what do you think of that finish? Well, that was a real show of courage because Kayla really had it bad the previous round. And I know it's Terry Wallace's policy. Okay. If you have a bad round, then you've got to make sure you go straight back out and have a good After round. Two minutes and Mark Taylor certainly did that in style. I think, I think we knew as early as the first round that each boy had the power to hurt and knock out his opponent. So it's gone for Kayla. It's been a great performance. He worked very hard for, for the win. And, uh, well, sky's the limit now. Yes, absolutely. And there's just, you can see Roy Guns and disappointed promoter Frank Warren also manages Gums. Gums at one time, I mean, he's the WBA number nine. Now, does this mean, I presume it does, that Mark Taylor can now get into the top ten of the world rankings, winning his 24th fight and showing all the grit that I certainly knew he had, but at one time I really wondered whether he could get back into the fight, and uh, so did Jim. Arms around Lawless and Frank Black for the Fleet Street photographers. And that really is such a great moment for a fighter. And we'll have a look at the replay here, Jim. So as they hoist Kayla as the new champion, the short jab, and just look at that right hand, it came miles and still caught Gums. And at that point, Gums' legs there just buckled and all he was looking to do was grab and get out of trouble, but it wouldn't happen. And Kayla would not leave him alone and almost caught him on the floor. In fact, I think the punch just brushed past. When they put that Lonsdale belt around you, Jim, I know the World Championship is the ultimate for you, but how does that feel? No, but the funny thing about a Lonsdale belt, when fighters win European and world titles, if they don't win a Lonsdale belt outright, it's always a regret for the rest of their lives because the Lonsdale belt is the most beautiful trophy in the world of boxing. So, Jim, I think we've got up there with Simon Reid can talk to Mark Kaler if he can pull him away from all those backslappers. Mark Kaler, British and Commonwealth champion, how's it feel? Oh, it's marvellous, marvellous feeling, marvellous. Oh, gentlemen, boy came, boy came to bomb me out early and he was going tired. The belt to Mark Taylor, were you at all worried because when you went down in the fourth it really did look as if you were in terrible trouble I went down I can't even remember I can't remember as soon as you said yeah I'll tell you Mark you were down it was a good shot it was a good shot yeah. I'll take you on the old chin let's see what you got okay. I think we can see the uh, knockout now Mark if you have a look down here you can see the punch that made you the champion There it goes, Mark. What were your feelings here? A beautiful shot, beautiful shot. Beautiful shot, beautiful shot. How long was he going before you finally hit him? Uh, about 20 seconds. It's hard to say. I'm on such a high, I'm not sure what happened. You seem to have such venom. Is, was that contrived or did you really feel hatred against him? It's just my job.